see a little box pop up. It says something and then it says leave meeting or got it. So click got it. And then that gets out of the way and then we're ready to party. So <clears throat> sitting and remembering that meditation is many layers of benefit. So you are firstly doing the appropriate work to arrange your structure and spotlight. Sideways now. Um, so again, when you're sitting upright at the edge of your chair, you're not back against the back of your chair slouching like this, which is not good standing posture, walking posture. So you're already in a, in a safe context of being on a chair, tilting slightly uh, forward in the pelvis, but not too much, slight tuck of chin. So the crown is, is lifting rather than chin up, throwing off the positioning. And so we're already establishing this meditation central line that when we stand up, when we shift to the left, when we walk upstairs, when we squat down or we stand up, that, that central channel stays intact. Keep the integrity of that, right? So a few moments here. The other piece to that is meditation. In the nose. Hold the breath for a moment there. Softly out the nose or the mouth. And when you're ready, again, in the nose. Holding the breath there, feeling those deep intrinsic muscles that are active and working to bring the breath in and then melt those out of the body. Down to empty. And do that a few more times, set your own rhythm. One of the main problems with balance is top heaviness. So it's tension in these muscles around the neck, the chest, the, the upper chassis here. Uh, when we stand, we walk, our arms get kind of active because we're afraid, but that makes us top heavy. Whereas as we melt, these muscles and melt the shoulders, then we actually connect to the floor, connect to the roof. So do your best here to just keep your alignment, but then try to use the breathing to melt out deep intrinsic tension in the ribs, the back, the shoulders. Just another five, six breaths. Also on the internal layer, noticing content in the mind, which can get in the way, which can actually be dangerous. Let's say you're crossing the street, but yet you're thinking about some other person, place, thing, or time. Now you're in trouble in the present, right? So that's the practical side of meditation is clearing the content so you're actually here present for the obstacles of the concrete or the, the rug or the stair or people whizzing by, right? So meditation is a survival skill, especially as we age and things are speeding up around us. We want to be very, very present and very clear of internal distraction. So final couple of breaths, just noticing that internal content if there is any which there usually is and let it dissolve let it clear another few breaths I will do sort of a minimal chair-based joint mobilization and we'll stand up do a little standing work uh, and then we'll start our walking stuff here. But let all of it just be a continued meditation. 
right? So don't lose attention to that internal work. Slide your hands forward past the knees, drop the head softly, round the back as if you're pushing your back towards the back of the room behind you. Slide your hands back along your thighs, pull your elbows back, shoulder blades squeeze back, lift your head as if to look at the sky. Two more. Slide the hands forward. Remember to do all this very soft. Round. Bowing forward. Then slide the hands back, pull the elbows back, look up towards the ceiling. And one more of each. Sliding hands forward, bowing. Sliding back, arching. That should help you be able to find middle between those two positions. Find middle. From middle, rotations. Slide left hand forward past the knee. As right hand slides back, elbow pulls back, and just softly turn to look to your right. And then staying nice and soft, turn and come back and look to your left. Two more of each. Again. Uh, the amount of the turn is not as important as the quality of the body as you turn. So better that you turn very little, but stay nice and soft, and then slowly let that softness grow to have better, uh, further range. Soft rotations left, soft rotations right. After you finish that third one there, find the middle, hang the arm. And lateral, side leaning. And back up. Lateral, kind of like you're softening this hand down towards the floor a little bit and then coming back up. And then softening long. And back up. Just do that a couple more times each side. After you've done your third one to the second side, so you're even, come back. Let's go right into our soft shoulder circles where we let the shoulders come a little forward, up, back, down. Size does not matter in terms of the range. Start comfortable, but just have all the elements of forward, up, back and down to release. That's the most important piece. From released, a little soft forward and up, back, down. So get that loosening up of the chassis there. Feel those shoulder blades protracting, elevating, retracting, pressing. One more. And then reverse. So we go a little back, a little up, a little forward, a little down. Just as minimal as you'd like. Nothing crazy. Just feel this looseness and cultivate a spacious quality in this little area here, the a shoulder weld. Shoulder weld. Loose. Most of us have that space collapsed and congealed and, and, and compressed until we actually start finding up oh, looseness, space. And that gets rid of that top heavy quality. And release. Bend the elbows, bring the hands up, and let's just do chicken wing out. And down. And in. And down. And out and up. And down. Just feel all those. Again, little barnacles and adhesions and layers of tissue that you're loosening and allowing this sliding quality through the body, effortless quality through the body. Elbows pull back, down, forward. Some of you, this will be as maximum as you can go. That's fine. Others someday here, others someday here, and then down. And remember, soft. So some effort but only only a little bit right keep that soft quality because it's this ease 
It's these open highways and pathways of ease that allow this movement to really go there, not a bunch of effort and force. Last one. And down, just some light movements for the head. Chin down, chin up. Do this a few times. And think of this idea of discernment. Discernment. We use this to describe, you know, uh, discerning between this color and that color or uh, uh, this food and that food, like discerning, oh, I like that, I don't like that. But on a very physical tissue-based level, think of discerning what is your skull, what is your cervical vertebra, and find a discernment awareness of all the spaces between that, right? There's seven neck vertebra, there's the head on top. Come back to neutral and just turn the head and rotate. And there's this pivot, this really important pivot where chin down and chin up, as well as turning left, turning right, as well as all the different movements your head makes. It's one pivot that can do all of these things. And again, remember looseness, softness, ease with how you're moving from that space. Let everything below that, that point relax. Come back to middle. Now we do this little funny one. Chin forward, back, and way back. And then forward, middle, back. Helping us find middle. Most people with bad posture or, or postural issues, they live right about here. There's a slope, a tightness, and then the chin is up, right? So this is an exaggeration of what's happening for most people all the time. So that's the importance of this move here, going back, finding the back where this is all opening, and then middle, and then forward where it closes down. But again, it's good to know what's the range this way, putting your chin out there, and then middle, and then back. Now try to find middle. And again, this thing they talk about in Tai Chi, a string tied to the crown of your head, dangling you. So feel that. And most of the time when I say lengthen up through the crown of your head, people do something with the chin like that. Oh, okay. But it's the opposite. So when I say lengthen up through the crown, chin should go down a little, base of skull open, crown lengthen up. All righty. And then finally circles, softly drop ear, towards right shoulder, then back, around, forward. So make some little circles, just very small. Just try to get that feeling of bobblehead loose. Find that pivot around which this movement happens effortless, as small as you'd like it to be. Last one, and then we switch direction. Go the other way, small, loose, easy, relax. Last one. And hang it in front and come back up as if the string is pulling top of the head. All right, let's do our hands are on your thighs, forward fold, hinging at the hips, sliding your hands down toward the feet, let your head hang, then sliding up as you come up softly rounded, lift the chest, gently arch, and fold again. Stay arched as you fold until you slide those hands down, let the head hang. And then stay rounded as you come up until you get all the way up to the top and then arch. And then so arch. So it's called shaking loose the heavenly pillar, where you're just trying to find an easy, loose quality through the whole torso rather than that.
grab, ripped, held position. And sitting upright, find the middle. Let's just take five nice long breaths. The ideal here would be that you now feel a little more discernment and space between all the parts, shoulder blades, arms and shoulders, each of the 24 vertebra, the skull on top, and a sort of lighter quality through the upper body. Keep that idea as we stand up and allow the legs to be what you sink through and connect to the ground. Rely on these legs. Standing up and sitting down, so as loose as you can be through the arms and shoulders, slide your feet back a little. And we fold at the hips. Now remember, we keep folding, keep folding, keep folding till the head and shoulders are in front of your ankles. Then you just get the butt off the chair, but stay folded, and then push through the earth and rise up tall. Stay very light through the shoulders, through the head and neck. Feel that crown being gently pulled up. Sitting down, again, legs are roots of the tree, strong. Butt goes back, sink the butt down, land, and then sit vertically. Three more, we fold, and I'll turn sideways so you can see. It's just this fold, and you just keep folding, you keep folding, then it's easy, it's easy. There's no, force and effort required here. Then same thing on the way down, just the butt back, head and shoulders forward, sink, and easy. So it's like falling up. Last one. Three squats, sink, and rise. Soft, loose, again, like you're falling through space and relying on your liquid body rather than a bunch of tension. So again, we're not sitting in the chair now, we're just squatting and rising. Now, stay upright. And you've got your chairs on either side of you there. Let's go over to the right chair and uh, use the, your hand on that chair. Put the weight through the uh, right leg a little bit and notice you want to let that knee softly bend. The weight goes all the way through the ball of the foot. Now lift the heel of the left foot, get to the tippy toes of the left foot, and then place the whole foot back down without any weight. Change your weight, still using this chair over here, and then heel, tippy toe, back down without any weight, change. So feel it be empty, lift to the tippy toes, this empty foot, lower that foot, change. The empty foot, down empty, change. Take it a step further if you'd like. You get to the tippy toes, you slightly lift, lower, put the whole foot down without any weight, and then change. Get to the tippy toes, possibly disconnect, reconnect, all the way, change. A couple more, maybe go even higher, knee above the hip line, change. Notice this meditation posture. It's a sort of a quality of ease through the central you know, space within you can be, and over time will be, totally effortless. So you're just still meditating. Whatever the arms are doing, whatever the legs are doing in Tai Chi, that central line, that central space remains undisturbed. Now, as you have your right leg empty and we're near the right chair, put the heel out in front. I'll turn sideways so you can see it. Notice I'm not way out here. I'm just right in front, comfortable distance. Then we shift into that front leg. Get to the tippy toes of the back foot 
and then shift into the back leg. Tippy heel. Shift. Shift. So this level one of the, of the exercise is the best one to start trying to do without your hand on anything. As we do level two and level three, you might want to put your hand on it, or you might need to, but at the very least, we don't want to be just here if we don't need to be. So fingertips or nothing at all with knowledge that the chair is there for you. One more, level one. And notice that there's some forward movement, but a lot of what matters is the releasing through the leg, letting the legs support you. Same thing, there's some backward movement, but most of what matters is releasing through the leg to free up this foot. So now that it's free, lift and lower, shift. Back foot empty, bend the knee, pull the heel to the butt, place the toe back down, shift back. Lift, lower, shift. Check in with the teacup idea. Set a teacup right on top of your head. And so you want to keep a stillness as you change the weight forward. Pick up that back foot, change the weight back. Pick up the front foot, one more level two. Remembering that idea of loose, relaxed, easy. So like for instance, Bruce, you remember what we did on, on Thursday? Try not to hold your hands like this. Remember we were doing this loose quality through your arms. So everybody let your arms go. So that you actually are down through your legs. Now, level three, here's where you probably want your hand on the chair. Let's do three in a row of just the lift. So it's lift the knee, softly land the heel. Lift, lower. So hand on the chair, lift, and lower. Now, let's do it the other leg. So we shift and establish the right. Now it's not only heel to butt, but it's knee up and reach the toe back with no body weight. And up, back, up, back. Now, shift back with this front leg. Up, heel down, shift. So the up is important, but maybe not even as important as the reaching back with no change in weight, and then a shift. So discern that, discern this, but also that, and then shoot. Last one. We'll just do level four today, hand on the chair. You bring this up and then it's just a soft little Extension, like little, like some waters on the tip of your toe, and you're just going up, shake it off. Okay, and set that down, shift, bring the other leg up, same idea, just a soft little extension of the leg, little toe kick, shift back. So, what this does is it forces us to really feel is this leg empty? Because if we bring the leg up, but we're still grabbing on for dear life in the leg. When we do that, it's gonna throw off our balance. But when we're loose, it just flicks out. It's actually through. So it's a through test to see how through you are. Good, change sides, sidestep to your other chair. Empty this inside leg or left leg, softly touch the heel in front. Level one. So this is the rocking chair. Just easy, easy. And rocking chair is a very good visual because we all know that the way a rocking chair's uh, legs are built, it's effortless how it rocks. It's not working. It's just kind of easy. And we want to get that feeling. Easy. Changing weight. Level two, lift, lower, rocking chair. 
Other foot lift, toe down, rocking chair. Continue. Again, notice, do you need to be using the chair the amount that you're using? So that's the question. Those of you that have some support, it's not a question of all or nothing. It's a question of dosage. It's a question of amount. So you can still have your hand on the chair, but notice if you're leaning on it, that you're robbing yourself of building this internal infrastructure and integrity. Last one of level two. Now we're going level three. This is where you might need that chair. Let's do three of these in a row where we lift and softly touch the heel. Do it again, lift, touch the heel. Maybe some of you feel like challenging yourself hands-free someday. Let's do the other leg. Shift, rocking chair. And then it's not only heel to butt, but knee up. Toe back, up, toe back, up, toe back. Now flow it, shift, up. Remember the down is just as important, empty, shift, forward and up, back. Shift, teacup should be undisturbed, central line, undisturbed. It's not like a leaning forward and a leaning back. There's this floating, floating. That's level three. Now level four, ideally will be very loose and soft. So you might need hand on chair though for safety, but lift. And then it's just this little flick. It's just a little straighten and bend, loose, loose, put it down, shift, bring it up, loose, back. I'll turn sideways so you can see, loose, back. I'm not snapping my knee joint. I'm not forcing it and holding it out there. Just lifting and going, ah. Easy. Last one. And we step back. Step to the other side. Next exercise. Free up the inside leg. Level one. You got right heel touching. Easy shift. Back foot is empty. Let it just swing forward. Heel touches. Easy shift. Shift back. Left leg empty, swing it back, shift back. Forward, swing, forward. Back, swing, back. Forward, swing, forward. Your whole goal here is feel an empty leg. Step an empty leg without putting weight in it and then change into that. So you change into the right leg, left leg empty, you swing it. Swing it. Now we go level two. Lift, lower, shift. Now the back foot empty can step up and over a small obstacle, touch the heel down, and then shift. Back foot empty, heel to butt, and touch toe. Now we shift back, carry your teacup, Bring the front foot up, tuck, and reach it behind, and then shift back. Lift, lower, shift. Once the back leg is empty, it's safe to just pick it up and over. Shift. So as I've said many times, one of the main discernments, the main things that, that it, a mistake that people make is they pay most of their attention to the stepping foot because it's obvious, it's the one moving. But it's the relationship to the full leg that allows what you do with that empty leg to be easy and free and safe. So pay attention to your full leg and then just like a feather, move that other leg. Last one, level two. So we're not jumping the gun trying to pick up that foot 
until we're actually in the correct relationship with our standing leg and then with our other standing leg. All right, level three. Maybe use that chair. Up, down, shift. This back leg goes heel to butt, knee up, foot out, and lower the heel, shift. Bring the knee up, reach the toe back, shift back. Then knee all the way up, tuck, reach, shift back. Lift, lower, shift. Exaggerated bicycle, shift. Knee forward and up, toe back, shift back. And we bring this knee up, tuck, reach it back, then shift. Up, down, shift. All right, now level four, we add a flick to each one of those. So it's flick, down. Then this comes up to chamber and flicks. Down. This comes up in front, flip. Back. We shift back. This lifts. We flick in front, step it back, flip. Down. Flip. Down. Flip. Back. So it's just testing. And change sides. Inside leg empty, level one. Rock into it, swing an empty foot, rock. Rock back, swing back, rock back. It's the most like walking. Keep an eye on your upper body in the sense of where are you grabbing on? Sometimes people will grab their hands behind their back or they'll hold on to themselves like this or they'll hold like this. Any of that, though it might seem like it's helping you in the short term, in the long term, is training the wrong thing. It's training us to be up above the ground. So all your attention to this idea of saw. Through the leg, through the leg, through the leg, leg. Level two. Lift, lower, shift. Small obstacles, so that means the back foot comes up, over, and down. Shift. Heel to butt, toes to the floor, we shift back. Up, tuck, reach, shift back. How's your teacup doing? How's the tension in your shoulders and neck, arms? Chen Man Chang, the one of the great sort of recent masters of Tai Chi, said he had a huge breakthrough in his Tai Chi when he had a dream that he had no arms. He had a dream he had no arms and so understood this relationship without these guys getting in the way. These are wonderful. Our arms are wonderful. Let's go to level three now. Lift, lower, shift. Up, over, reach out, down, shift. But letting the arms go as if you don't have them. What would you do? You'd rely on a better relationship through the legs to the earth. And you realize that, you know, Tai Chi is a martial art. The power comes from legs. Uh, from the earth up through the legs, through the torso, through this rotating fulcrum in the middle, and the arms are just tentacles. But usually we rely on them for way too much. Level four. Flick. 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 
flick. And there's another saying in Tai Chi. One full, three empty. So each time we step, one leg and two arms should be equally empty. All right, so there's only one that's got that full quality, that tree trunk quality. Loose. Right. And middle. Shogun closing gesture. Find your runway. That means it's a space that you can take at least five or so steps. Make your way to one side of that runway. We're going to walk forward and backwards. Five or so steps in a row, levels one through four. So take a foot, empty it, put the heel out. This is your walking through the uh, supermarket. Easy. So just shift. Wait for the leg to be empty, shift, or step, and then shift, step an empty foot, shift. Carry that teacup with you all the way, and then we go backwards. Shift back, wait for it. Toe back, shift back. The goal here is can you take the foot back and touch the toe back behind you without putting weight in it? That's the whole super challenge here. Shift back. There's an empty foot in front, just swing it back, little touch. Swing it back, little touch. Shift, swing it back, little touch. Shift, swing it back. Let's do that again, level one. Swing, swing. Check your meditation floating body. Try to keep that vertical ease. Remember, you have no arms. You gotta rely on those legs. One leg is full, the other is empty. Let's go level two. Up and over, put the heel down. Shift. Up and over, put the heel down. Shift. Shift. Pull me back. Shift. Up and over, touch the toe. Shift. Discern. Between when you fill the leg, step without shifting, shift without stepping, step without shifting, shift without stepping. <clears throat> level three is just level two taken up a notch. So that just means however your mat, whatever your maximum is of that exaggerated bicycle step, you're buying real estate for yourself. You're creating space through all the joints that are involved in the leg movement. Safely back, be careful with this one, because as you pick up a leg, if it's not actually empty and through, the, the body will get thrown off if you yank it. So wait long enough to just do a soft movement and only go the amount you can remain at ease. All right. Level four, flick, down, flick, down, flick, check your vertical, flick, down, flick, down, flick, reverse. So you're going back, you're flicking in front and then stepping the foot back, shifting, flick in front, Step back. Flick back. Flick back. Flick forces you to really pay attention to that relationship to your standing leg. All right, really nice, everyone. Shogun, closing. Settle. This is the middle of the middle of the middle. It's our vertical middle, as well as the front to back middle, as well as the middle of the circle that would go around our belt line. So the very middle of that. The more we have that, the safer we are when we move, right? Side steps. So make your way to the side of your runway. Empty your 
uh, should be your left leg if I'm your mirror. Out, in, out, in. And remember, you've got your middle, and then you've got the right leg as your plug or your conduit. Right? Think of it sort of like a plug from a computer or something, plugging down, and there's chi and energy and electricity and connectedness to your root through this open conduit. It's not a wooden stilt. Now step out and shift and make the left leg the conduit. Shift back, right leg the conduit. Left leg the conduit. The middle using this leg. The middle using that leg. Become efficient, proficient at changing which one you're using. Now the right leg being empty, in, back out without the weight changing. Now the left leg is the conduit. And this is loose and empty, as free as, a, as an arm. That's the idea. So now it's moving with ease. Next time it's in, keep it in and be as close as you can. And now change to the right leg conduit. From the middle, change. From the middle, change. So notice this is where we really feel the downward importance of that down going through the conduit, down through the conduit, down. Now keep the left leg empty, step it up. Change into the left leg. Now once the left leg's that conduit, bring right foot in. Change so the right leg is the conduit, step out. Change, step in. Change, step out. How's your teacup? It should be undisturbed. Your middle should be undisturbed. <laughs> that way. Just notice how much are you very clear in discerning shift without stepping, step without shifting, shift without stepping, step without shifting, shift without stepping, step without shifting. Now, come to the middle, the feet parallel, hip distance. <clears throat> this is Hands play with clouds, so this is an advanced, uh, this is a, a, a beginning Tai Chi movement, and then we add the legs to make it the advanced Tai Chi movement. So change your weight to your right leg. Turn your belly button to the right a little bit. Stay turned a little to the right as you shift to the left leg, and then turn to the left. And then stay turned to the left as you shift to the right, and then turn. So now you start to put that together, and the shift and the turn can become one Thing, a shift turn, and then a shift turn. And notice if you let it, the arms, which are light, free, and loose, naturally do this little movement, the bear washing paws. <clears throat> now it becomes, let's play with clouds here. As you shift and turn to the right, left hand floats up like vapor and becomes a cloud. Shift to the left, turn to the left, Cloud goes across the sky, the bottom hand sweeps the lake, and then they just naturally, if you're out of the way, change places, shift and turn, and they change places, shift and turn, they change places, shift and turn, they change. Now, shift and turn. So here we are on the left leg. As you change places with the hands, bring your right foot in. Your right foot stays in as you shift through the right leg and turn to the right. That's cloud and leg. Then as the hands change places, one going up, the other coming down. That's what I mean by changing places. You step out. Left foot should be empty. Now we shift left and turn left, cloud leg. As they vapor and rain, right foot comes in. Shift and turn, cloud leg. As they 
rise and fall, left foot steps out. Notice, did you already put the weight in your left leg, right? So, so Gary, that's what I saw from you is, and I think other people as well, oh, right? That's, that's not what we're looking for. It's that, that, this hand comes through. Then as the hands change, the right foot comes in. It's, that's the only thing that happens. We do, I don't, I'm not turning yet. Then there's the change and the turn. Now again, now you should be over here with the hands, both hands, both hands. Then as they go one up, one down, the left foot steps out. But notice I didn't fall into it and I didn't turn that way. I just took a small step, shift, turn. As the hands change, you step in. So as is usual, what I'm doing looks like more than what you're doing, but is actually less. It's more precise. Now we switch directions, come in and out, shift and turn. So that's a very simple gesture. It's just a shift turn with these in space. And very simply, one goes up, one comes down while the foot comes in. And then just very simple, change leg and turn. But you got to let that right hand come across underneath. Then as they change, step out. So the less you do through your tissues, the more this movement is correct. The more you're doing in terms of holding on to your body, that's when the awkward things happen where we're doing something and the arms are doing all this crazy stuff. It's just shift and turn, step, they change. Shift, all I'm doing is just turning from my middle and across they go. Then as one rises, the other falls, step in. It's just simple, shift and turn from that middle point. Let the hands be full and floating in space and do less, do nothing through the body, and you'll actually find yourself doing the Tai Chi. And it feels wonderful and also kind of easy. All right, and both hands down, back to middle, Shogun, closing gesture. And hands come down. Make your way to the middle between your two chairs so that they're there for safety. Let's do our rotational steps. Empty right foot, turn it out. So this being empty is the key. And then it's in one smooth gesture. Shift, turn, and bring the left foot to match. Keep an eye on your teacup. Also the idea that your arms are relaxed. Notice if you're stooping over, if you don't have a nice vertical line in the body, this is going to bother your back, it's going to be harder, and it's also going to be, balance-wise, more difficult to manage. Versus if you actually find vertical, then it's as easy as just turning a stick that's up and down, just turning the stick in place. It takes very little effort, and it's very effective at changing your orientation in space. Find your vertical line, and then use one leg as your main conduit, the other leg as your main conduit. Make your way all the way around twice, and then you'll switch directions and turn to your left. Leg turns out, knee rotate around. Leg turns out, rotate around. Check your crown, check the space between your skull and neck. Chin slightly down, crown up. What you can feel when you do that is that you're dangling. You're hanging from the sky, and there's just this throughness to the body all the way through the earth, the stability of the earth. And if you even have one moment where you feel Oh, that was easy, or that was effortless. Cue in on that and know that that's what you're practicing and cultivating is to make that be your regular feeling. 
After you've finished two in each direction, you're facing forward. Then we go to the emptying this right leg again. Instead of turning it out, we turn it in. Now notice when you turn that leg in, the pelvis turns a little bit to this left corner as well. So the leg turns, you also let the pelvis turn. So there's kind of this, there's this pinched position, groin area, thighs pinching inward. So that little pinched position from here, pinch, and then turn and get to parallel. And then again, little pinched position, and then parallel. Pinch, shift and turn. Pinch, shift and turn. This is powerful stuff in the sense that, see it around twice, in the sense that when you're standing around in your life, what matters a lot is where you're aiming your ship. So orienting yourself to where you're trying to get to. And often we don't understand how to do this orientation piece with ease. After two, switch direction. Pigeon toe in pinch position and then turn. Pigeon toe, turn. But if you can safely reorient yourself to whatever, you either have to go somewhere or get away from something, right? If you can orient yourself correctly, rest can be a lot easier. But many people's falls happen when they're turning because they don't orient themselves. They just try to go for it and their feet stay locked in the ground and then they. So you may have heard that, it may have happened to you, right? But that's, that's a major danger point in daily practice. Now let's put all that together. Right leg turns out, we shift and turn and go to that pinched position, left foot turns in and then keep going and turn right foot out again and then shift and turn and go to that pinched position. So now teacup, central channel, Easy, empty and full. Notice, are you holding your arms in some silly way that you could relax? Bruce, let your arms hang. After you've gone around twice, go the other way. Turn left foot out. A lot of times you're going to be looking at the floor, which I understand, but it throws the posture off. So consider not like maybe look down with the eyeballs, but not by stooping your whole posture and swinging your body around the space. Keep around. After you've gone around twice, that left side direction, shogun, hands come up and over, settle, settle to your middle. All right, and I, I think it was last week that I started showing you guys the ballistic movement, right? Ballistic meaning power, explosive, you could say, right? That doesn't mean we're going to do something crazy and unsafe, but the idea is here. So I'm going to turn slightly sideways so you can see the angle of my movement. So I'm filling up my back leg. So I'll say my, uh, my right, but it would be your left, so I'm your mirror, and your front foot is empty and have the heel out in front loose. Now, instead of just shifting like we've done, we load up this back leg. So again, this is the importance of it not being a locked stilt. If you have a locked stilt, you have no spring-loaded power. So you have to soften through that back leg a little bit and let it gently compress to a spring-loaded state. And then this front foot is empty and we advance. And notice when I advanced, I brought this foot up, but I didn't put weight in it, so it's empty. Then, this leg is my full leg, spring-loaded, push and go back. And I bring this back empty. So there's a advance and a slide up of the back foot. Advance. Retreat. Advance. 
retreat. So just notice there's a little bit of a oomph. There's a oomph. Oomph. Right? Continue. So we're going forward and back. Push. Push. It also brings with it an added challenge of momentum. So controlling momentum as you advance, you're having to take that advancing momentum and not let it tip you over and fall on your face, but send it where? Down and through to the earth. So again, retreating, but sending it down through the leg to the earth rather than staying up here all tense and falling over like a big tree. Instead, advance and go through the root. Retreat, go through the root. Advance, loose, 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 loose. Last one, loose. Change legs. So fill the right leg, empty the left leg. I'll turn slightly sideways so you can see. Advance, retreat. Advance, retreat. Is it possible to keep that still point even with a swift advance? Do I have to disturb my internal still point? The answer is no, you do not. And anywhere that there's tension and grip, that's what gets in the way and gets stuck and causes all kinds of issues but the looser and looser and looser you get, it just goes through, goes where it belongs, down in the earth. So this is a forward advance and backwards. Forwards and backwards. Now, lateral. So again, before we did lateral, we shifted, we came in, right? we did it like that. Now, <clears throat> load up this outside leg, inside leg is empty. Advance, or, or sidestep. Keep this one empty. So you're working on, this is the full leg, this one stays empty. Then I make that it. This is empty. And it can be small, right? It could be, it could be this small, but yet you're getting that feeling of momentum and send it through the earth. Momentum, but take it through the earth. And middle. You know, Chauvin. Rub groin area, front hips, around the legs and hips, the sacrum tail, up onto your low back, down the legs, thighs on all sides, knees. All angles, lower leg, ankle, and then around and come all the way up. Up the outer arm, down the inner. And other side, up the outer, down the inner. And close. And seal, one, All right, have a safe seat. Make sure your chair is where you think it is. Have a seat, any brief questions. <clears throat> um, and of course, if you've got somewhere to be, you can just wave and say bye-bye.